Hello, everybody, and welcome again to ChessLecture.com. This is International Master David Guido. Today, we are going to be looking at an exciting game that was played recently at the European Club Cup uh, tournament in Greece, which is an extremely strong uh, team tournament. And the game today is between Peter Spidler and Hikaru Nakamura and a sharp Kings Indian, one of my favorite openings. And this game also kind of marked... Uh, the second win for Nakamura against Fiddler in, in the last year, I believe, after he had a lot of trouble with him at first. So I think he kind of overcame a psychological barrier. And uh, the, the style of this opening is more suited to Nakamura's dynamic style. Not that Fiddler's not dynamic, but Nakamura really thrives in this kind of randomness almost. Um, where it's just like pure calculation. Fiddler's a little more of a classical style player. So let's take a look. The game is a King's Indian, as promised. D4, Knight F6, C4, G6, Knight C3, Bishop G7, E4, D6, and now H3. Usually Spiddler, um, you know, well, usually plays E4, so that probably helped Nakamura too, but uh, recently he's been playing F3. He beat Rajabov with a Samish in the... Uh, Candidates tournament earlier this year, and it's not so surprising because he was helped by uh, Nikolai Vitugov, who's a big Samish specialist. But h3 has kind of been a trendy line, so castles, and now bishop g5. So this is really the line that's been played a bit. It's a little odd looking, it's this kind of like prophylactic play with h3. And, and Nakamura made a good choice when he played knight a6. Just a couple months earlier, against Aronian, he had played c5, d5, a6, which is a kind of typical idea, especially when white's not developing against kingside too quickly, to try to play like a Banco Gambit style. And if a4, uh, then maybe queen a5, you know, trying to take advantage of some weak squares. But it turns out that after, like, bishop d3, b5. It's not going to take and give black a kind of a nice banco, but just knight f3. And it, b5 actually doesn't really achieve too much. I first saw this idea in uh, Yermolinsky's book, Road to Chess Improvement, a very well-known book that came out in, uh, maybe 10 years ago. And when I saw the game, Aroni and Nakamura, it immediately made me think of this. The point is that after bc, bishop takes c4, well, black hasn't really achieved anything special. And it turns out this was actually the exact position that Yermolinsky had, too. It's kind of similar to like a Banco Gambit decline, where maybe white took on b5 and then did b6 and just kind of tossed the pawn away. And black is still kind of cramped. He has trouble exchanging off any pieces. Part of that is because of this h3. There's no bishop g4 to trade pieces, and also no like knight g4 to e5. So uh, Nakamura ended up a little worse and ended up losing the game, and this time he goes for knight a6. So now the main way of playing is to just play knight f3 for white, or bishop d3, perhaps even more common. And then you usually will get like a, like a locked up position like this, and the knight comes to c5 at some point. Maybe uh, white will try to play a3, b4. So kind of a typical sharp king's Indian. And knight f3 can be very similar. But Spiller played something very, very unusual that looks very, very strange to me. I don't really like it. It's kind of move maybe I'm not so happy to face with black, but I wouldn't play it with white either. He played f4. So this makes a strange impression to play h3 and bishop g5 and then f4, all in a row, not developing the king side, also not developing much of the, the queen side, rather than playing like queen d2 or something. Um, so really uh, a weird move, but, you know, how do you take advantage of this? And it was actually played like once in some, like, rapid game or something, like some Spassky Polgar, like, 20 years ago, but that game wasn't really so interesting, theoretically. Black did something like f5 very early. Uh, so here, like, you know, it's a little harder to play e5, so queen e8 has been played with the idea e5. But Nakamura's move is kind of interesting. He played knight h5. Um, normally this would be 
maybe not the best type of move, but it's quite logical looking at this square and also pressuring this pawn. So even like h6, you know, is a threat to drive the bishop away from the f pawn. So now white has to make some strange moves again to cover these squares. So he goes knight g2. And this is where Polgar did something like h6, bishop h4, f5, which just looks really weird to me. E, F, G, F, you know. The white's position looks strange, but black's position does not look very good to me. Like, I don't, I don't understand this plan. So what Nakamura did, I think, is much better. He played C5, D5, and now this move is really interesting. Now he played B5, so he's really setting everything on fire. So the first point, you know, this move looks impossible, but this is the key, like with stronger players, not even just like Nakamura, but, you know, grandmasters I am, they'll look at a move like this that they would like to make work, whereas a lot of people just wouldn't even consider it because it's, you know, it doesn't look like it's possible. But black has to create some counterplay some way, and the first point is if knight takes, you can simply take home b2, and not a bad deal. Uh, white has a little more space, but his development is not very good, so black is needing to open the position. And he can't really play e6, not yet at least, his queen is hanging. f5 again does not look right, so b5, really nice move. So if knight takes bishop b2, so he does pawn takes knight c7. And now we can see just in a really unusual way he's ready to, to get to a banco. Um, type position. So he's all ready to do a6. So white plays a4, which looks logical, because now he can't play a6, because then b6, and then a5, and now it's a real extra pawn, a strong pawn. So he goes rook b8 first. And now what to suggest for white, because it's hard to develop. a6 is coming, and there's all this pressure on b2, but even like, let's say something like this, Knight takes, or maybe just bishop takes. It looks like a nice banco for black because white's position is, you know, all kind of contorted on the king side. So Siddler decides he's going to have to try to fight for the initiative. So things are really going to ignite g4, which looks quite logical. Push back um, the knight, help him develop. But it's very easy to become overextended in this kind of position. It's like all these pawn moves, it's like a lot of responsibility. Notice it's moved 12, and white has moved every pawn except for his B pawn. So awful lot of pawn moves. The thing about space is if the pawns become weak and you're forced to advance and the pieces get behind your pawns, you don't have any cover. So knight goes back. And now if he does bishop g2, again a6, Looks like a nice Benko. So he plays knight g3. And here black can still play a6. Looks very logical, and I, I prefer black. In this kind of position, I guess I feel like even if, you know, like maybe a computer would just take the pawn and say it's up a pawn. But I think black is like always going to have practical chances, even if white is technically better in some position like this because it's a long way before he can use the pawn, where black's always going to have some tactical chances. But Nakamura comes up with something very unusual here. Instead of a6, he goes the other way and plays h6. Bishop h4, and now knight h7. A really odd idea, like an idea I haven't really seen before in this kind of opening. Um, he's really just threatening g5, trapping the bishop. And White has to deal with that. He doesn't really want to move his knight on g3 back to e2. It's the only square. It's then just a6. So he plays queen d2. Now a6. So if he takes, then uh, bishop a6. Uh, White played bishop c4. Maybe he has to look at something like e5. And if takes, then like knight g4, where he's attacking this, and and this is also a threat, because there's still this pin, and, you know, some some kind of big mess, maybe like takes and d6, 
you know, very kind of weird situation going on. You know, Black, I think, even can do something uh, tactical like Knight G5 and, and offer a piece like this with very murky position. And this can happen, like, White's made all these pawn moves. Black might be able to sack a piece. If you look at the position, like, Black's position looks much better. He just happens to be down a piece. So you have to try to, to judge uh, the situation, which is not so easy. But Swindler, he didn't go that far. He did Bishop C4. So A, B, A, B, and now simply Bishop D7. So now he's really just looking uh, to win back the pawn. And this is, it's very difficult because um, it's hard to protect. Like he, he could play Rook A5, and maybe he needs um, to really kind of consider this, this move because it doesn't really look like Black can exploit uh, this so easily. And here, like... If you look at the computer, it'll even suggest like taking on c3 in order to get back the pawn on b5. I don't really like the look of that. But there is an interesting idea like um, knight b5, knight b5, and now um, g5. And this wins back the piece because the queen has to babysit the rook on a5. So this wins back the piece. So. The whole game is just like really unusual. Like, like black looks like he's going to play a6, and then he plays h6, and then he's focusing on b5, and then suddenly it's on g5. It's just all very strange. But it's very hard for white to keep control in a situation like this. And here, Spindler lost the thread. And this is a kind of position that's really easy maybe to say what he did is wrong when you're at home and you have an engine and everything and over the board, it's really hard to make these decisions if you can't just calculate it all out. The calculating maybe isn't even the hard part. It's assessing everything at the end. So he played e5, which looks kind of logical, you know. He gets e4 for his knights. Um, maybe if takes, he's going to get this break at some point. Um, it just doesn't work because he doesn't have to take on e5. So he just does bishop b5. This way the queen covers d6. Knight takes, knight takes, queen a5. It's not so easy to suggest anything else. And um, now black has some good choices. He could simply play knight back to c7. And then he's hitting b2 with his rook. This g5 is still in the air. This is still hanging. This is quite good. Uh, the position can be hard to play when you have good choices, too. And I think Nakamura made the, the best choice here. He plays queen e8. So this is a really nice move. It protects b5. It gets off this diagonal to his queen. Um, it's also, of course, looking at the white king. Uh, and it's just really hard to find any kind of move for white. You know, if, if knight e4, he can just start taking everything. You know, now this knight's ready to come here. You know, this would maybe be a typical idea, but he can just come here and everything's uh, falling apart. So he just castles and he's ready to sack a piece. G5, right? Might as well trap the piece. Knight F5, this is the idea, just it doesn't work. The thing is, I still think this is kind of impressive because I remember I was like, you know, I check this game online when it was being played, and I didn't know what was going on. And uh, the computer just says, you know, black is winning. Uh, for a human, it might look a little scary for black, but Nakamura just, you know, acts like it's nothing. Just he doesn't believe it, and he's right. Uh, he takes the bishop. Rook e one It's hard to offer moves because nothing uh, really works. He just has to you know, be a little bit careful. As I'll, I'll show some spots where he needs to watch out a little. D E. And now he does rook E5. The reason he does this is if F E, now the knight comes here. Now black is actually getting like a good position too. It's not just that he's up a piece. So he takes with a rook. Add some fuel to the fire. It doesn't really matter if he's down a piece or a rook. It's still um, losing material, so he's got to go for attacking chances. Um, now, if he takes here, it doesn't really 
I mean, both of them is win, but you know, you could just go like here and start breaking up the center like this. Uh, you know, White's King is not safe either, so um, Black will probably get the initiative pretty quickly. So he just does FE. E6, again, the best uh, way to break up the position. Uh, knight h6, king g7, queen d2, trying to get over near the black king. Queen d8, another nice move, covering some dark squares. Rook f6, more fuel to the fire. And now, like here, for example, black could still screw it up. He takes, queen check, and then takes, and uh, he's just just lost, uh, there's this mate here, if he goes here, I guess even just like queen h5 should be enough to win, or I guess bishop d3, this is even better, right, the mate, but he doesn't have to take the rook, he just uh, plays here, so it's easy to say, okay, knight d4 just wins, but he had to calculate everything, you know, ahead a little bit, and it's still kind of a confusing position. He plays knight f7, it's not really anything here. He does have to be a little careful, uh, like if he does rook f7, uh, then it's much less clear, like queen check, king g8, rook f7. You know, now things are getting a little eerie here. Like knight takes, gotta get rid of that guy. So this, and then he's going to take this, so can't really do that. So he just takes on f6 now, and now white resigned. It looks maybe like a strange place to resign, but he's really just um, out of ammunition. If he takes here, knight f3 check, this is the first point. You know, black's going to be able to material. And if he takes here, queen just comes to defend, again, up all kinds of material. And this check here takes, and again, there's not really anything left to do. There's just no pieces left. So an exciting game where we see sometimes the defense does win the game. Um, extremely creative game by both players, but uh, it looked like the, the truth was on Nakamura's side this time. So I hope you enjoyed that sharp battle, and we'll see you next time on chesslecture.com.